In this video, I'm going to be answering a question from one of our subscribers who talks about something that I did in a recent tutorial on Lush Life. Now, if you haven't seen the tutorials on Lush Life, I'm going to put some links below to those. There's three of them, I think, and probably could be at least 30 because it's definitely a difficult tune to play, but there's a lot to learn, of course, from the way that it's written and just a lot going on in the tune. And specifically, I'm focused on the kind of chicory feel from the album Expressions. And actually, our reader, Winston McMahon, or subscriber, talks about that in his question. He says, do you have any recommendations on playing solo lines on top of that left-hand pattern you were doing when you go back and forth between D flat and D chords? So thank you for the question, Winston. I'm going to play or cut out that section from the tutorial. I'm going to play a couple minutes of it so that you get a feel for how it sounds. And then we're going to come back and talk about some ideas that you can use for that pattern between D flat and D. Okay, let me play that for you now and we'll come back and talk about it. Okay, so I hope you heard that left hand pattern, the D flat to the D when it gets to the solo section and Winston wants to know if there are things that he can do or some suggestions for playing over top of that. So what I've done here is I've written out in longhand the left hand bass line. So it's I mean, obviously it's swing. You don't, you wouldn't write swing with like dotted quarters and 16th notes. It, swing is written with eighth notes, but you have to remember that it's actually swing. So if it were straight eights, it would sound like this. But we don't want that, we want this. So the first thing that I would do with the right hand is consider the scales themselves. So let's write out a D-flat bebop scale because that's going to be really useful in this particular situation. So let's start out with D-flat, E-flat, F, G-flat, G natural, A-flat, B-flat, C, and back to D like this. So the sharp 11 is the passing note. Actually it works if you call this a D flat seven sharp 11 chord. Okay. 
So that's the first thing that you can count on. The D7 or D major seven chord, same thing, except now we're writing out a D major seven bebop scale. So it's D natural, E natural, F sharp, and then G natural, G sharp, A natural, D natural, and C sharp, like this. So again, D major seven sharp 11 chord, basically an E chord over D seven, over D major seven. So that's how I think about those two chords. Basically both sharp 11 chords, both using that bebop scale. So the B flat or the D flat major seven sharp 11 bebop scale. And then D. Okay, so that's the first thing is get those scales under your fingers. Then what you can do is you can draw a couple of other ideas and let's grab another sheet of manuscript and think about maybe a pentatonic pattern. So for example, let's just do it in D because I don't want to write out all the sharps, but if we're in D major seven and you can do this in D flat as well, the pentatonic scale would be, you can use this one, which is D, E, F sharp, A and B. That's kind of like a simple pentatonic scale or you can use the G pentatonic scale and other pentatonic scales mixed in with that. So if we were to do the bebop scale first, and then go into the pentatonic scale. So this is um, D pentatonic. And again, you can transpose that to D flat as well. And the other thing that you can do is just stick to the chord itself. So for example, so C sharp on here, duh, and then play this, which is just the chord itself, the D major seven chord. So the pentatonic. And again, you can continue this chords all the way up. You can keep going up to G sharp here, and then all the way up to B, which is the upper structure triad. Kind of a cool sound. And what I really like you to practice here, inclusive of those three ideas, the bebop scale, the pentatonic scale, and the chords themselves is keeping that left hand rhythm going. Now you're never ever probably, unless you really, really like think it through is play it perfectly every time. I'm talking about this pattern. You'll notice that the only idea that I'm trying to do is just draw upon that and keep the rhythm going. I'm not trying to catch every note perfectly every time. The people who are listening are not really listening to that left hand pattern. What they're listening to is the soloing in the right hand. So they're not even going to discern whether you're missing notes or not catching everything perfectly. So you want to just do that in the left hand all day long. And then try to fit the right hand into that using those three ideas that I've given you. So you can see that the left hand is not playing that pattern perfectly. It's kind of randomly catching the notes, probably playing one where, where the beat is, but then the other notes are kind of like suspect here and there. And what you might want to do is just play each of the scales that I've given you over top of that, like this. And 
then move on to the pentatonics maybe. So switching back be between the D flat pentatonic and the D pentatonic. And then the other thing is the chords themselves. And the extension of this, Winston, is to get to the point where you're playing little melodies along with that and really making music from it. And of course, practice, practice, and a little bit more practice. Unlike Bob Ross videos where you can learn to paint in half an hour, it's probably gonna take you more than half an hour just to do this one thing. So I hope that gives you some ideas on how to solo over the D flat to D pattern in Lush Life. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And any more comments or questions that you have about Lush Life or anything to do with what we've talked about here, just post it in the comments below and I'll be sure to get back to you. Thanks for your time.